Good afternoon to everybody on the call today. Hi, good afternoon, Mene. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is very exciting to see each and every one of you on this call today. Um, and uh, you're all welcome. So, Thank you. Well, because we want to be very respectful of your time, um, I would like to invite Dr. Ibrahim Adosheu to um, give a welcoming um, address. Mr. President, sir. Okay. Uh, I would like to welcome each and every one of us to this first series of meetings or webinars we will be organizing on behalf of the Nigerian Veterinary Medical Association. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well and everybody is keeping safe. Uh, Dr. Ghani, myself, and Bless Me, CEO of VETSAC, are bringing this presentation to you titled the, mechanic, the, the Mechanics of Prudent Financial Management in Vet Business. Practice, practice profitability and deploying technology. Uh, Dr. Gani will be talking about the veterinary business aspect while uh, Blessing Mene will be talking about the technologies we'll be using to help with our practice. So without wasting much of our time, I know everybody is busy and uh, have very tight schedules and I wouldn't want to keep us longer than it's necessary. I will hand over to Blessing Nene to introduce the agenda of today's presentation and we can kick start. Uh, once again, I would like to welcome everyone here and may we have a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, everyone, you're welcome again. The agenda for today um, is going to, to... Dr. Ghani, if you can hear me, please call my attention so that I know when you're up. Um, so um, we'll start today by um, the opening remarks from Mr. President, which has been done. Then we'll have um, Dr. Ghani and our um, make a fantastic presentation to us um, on the mechanics of prudent financial management in veterinary business, um, after which we will transition into having conversations on um, technologies that could really help um, your veterinary business move forward. Um, another key aspect we'll be looking into today is um, how to apply for loans um, with regards to the COVID-19 loan from the CBN. After that, we'll proceed to um, a Q&A session. And um, I would request that if you have a question, please type the question on the chat box below. Then from that, um, we would get a comment from um, Dr. Uh, Bala Mohammed, And then uh, Mr. President again will be here to help us wrap up this conversation. So on behalf of VETAC, Dr. Ghani, NVMA, and everyone, uh, you're still once again welcome to this um, August occasion. So people, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you now. Um, hello, everyone. Um, sorry about the technical glitch. So um, one of the tools we are looking at um, supporting um, our veterinarians within the country right now is um, the BESAC application. So we spoke to a number of vets from across Nigeria to find out what it needs here. And a lot of vets, especially private vets, um, talked about the fact that um, they had issues with uh, appointments. Um, like sometimes vets forget to, um, they, they forget the appointments they have, maybe because there's too much appointments. And then the owner of the pet or the farm also forgets to remind the vet. So money is lost because of that. Um, some other vets talked about um, new ways of charging clients, you know, and all that. And um, some of them talked about the cumbersomeness of activities going on within their pharmacy and clinics. So we built this application to support veterinarians um, across the country. So this is going to be very useful for you if you have a private practice, if you run a state government hospital, or if you run your own private hospital, 
um, this will be very useful to you. And then if you do not have a hospital, there are parts of the application that will deploy it um, for you. So I'll walk you through each part of it, so please pay attention. Um, so the first part, if you have any question, just drop it on the chat box and then I'll respond to it. So the first part of the application is this, called Patients. Um, patients is where you're able to save um, everything about your, um, your pets, yeah? Uh, the name of your pets, um, the age of your pets, every information about the pets, and also about the owner. So if you click on view, uh, this is what you actually get to see. You see everything about the vets and everything about the pets. So this is the age of the pets, all the pet information are here, and then the information about the owners of the pets is here. And here you can schedule appointments, yeah, and the system is going to send you a reminder by text and by email to remind you that you have an appointment 24 hours before um, the due date, and it's also going to send you um, another reminder a few hours before the appointments with your client so that you don't have to forget about the appointments again, all right? And here you can also capture the medical history of the pets, all right? You can, uh, this is where you get to um, uh, write what you observed and all that, and you're also going to um, record vaccination activities. And so these um, application uh, would help, would remind you of the next time you vaccinate an animal. It will send a reminder to you yourself, and it will send a reminder to the owner of that pet or the owner of that farm that their animal or pet are due for um, vaccination. Um, you will also be able to um, offer prescriptions to your clients, and in which case, when you offer prescriptions to your clients, guess what happens? You, you, you can send your client an invoice by email, all right? And then you can pay for the drugs, you know, um, and then come pick it up at your clinic or you send someone to drop it with them. Uh, depends on the case. Uh, laboratories is for people who own labs. Um, this is specifically for teaching hospitals, but this is for people who if you own a private lab, uh, with state government like this is also going to be very useful to you. So everything about your pets, you can run it from here, or you can get your staff to run it from here, all right? And this application can be hosted on your own private server. So if you have a website um, for your organization, um, this could be set up on your website, uh, and you can run it independently from your own website. Uh, you can also manage your clients. Uh, there are different kinds of clients. Um, those are own pets and those are own fans. This is where you can manage it from. And your, your clients can also log in into your hospital, right? To either schedule an appointment with you, you know, or make payments for a service or product you're offering to them. Now, if we go to um, clinics, we have something very interesting here for you. Um, as a doctor, you can, like I said, schedule appointments. And if you have staff who are working for you, uh, you can actually uh, manage all the activities. Yeah. Now, for those of you who have pharmacies, um, you can dispense drugs from here, right? You can um, um, allocate specific drugs to a pet or a farm. And uh, if the owner of that um, drug or, uh, or the person who paid for the prescription has paid, it will show that um, it's dispensed. If they have not paid, it's, it's going to show pending. And then if it's a case of cancelled, um, um, prescription, you can just cancel it from here, all right? Now, there are cases here you might conduct surgery on a bed, on, on, a, uh, on an animal, um, yourself or maybe your staff. You can, you can actually schedule your surgery here and actually have your staff submit the entire report of what happened um, during the operation here. And this also captures all the um, veterinary doctors um, who actually participated in that operation, you know, um, and all that. Now, um, there's a very important part some of the um, new vets talked about. One of them um, had to do with um, inventory. So some people complain about the fact that drugs or um, uh, fees or items get bad in your shop or, um, or store. And this system will help you completely manage it, all right? to tell you how many, what you have available, uh, and then those are about to expire. 
So how it works is that it's going to send you an alert before something gets expired within your inventory. And then if you're already running low on stock on a particular item, depending on the threshold quantity, it's going to send you an alert um, by SMS and by email that um, item XYZ is running down, right? And then you can also track the items you recently just added um, within your application. So it has a, a whole suite of um, activities for managing invoices um, and payments, you know, um, to uh, managing your staff, different departments within your own hospital. Um, this is one of them, especially for those who have labs. Um, and you can also use this to manage your staff, you know, the people within your um, clinic, your shop, your private practice or your government hospital. So this is a complete application for veterinary practices. And we build this to actually solve problems based on complaints. And don't forget that some time ago, um, with the support of the veterinary community, we won a grant um, from Google. And um, this grant that we got, um, part of it has been um, um, used to help us build this successfully. Now, the second tool I want to share with you, um, we call it Farm God. Um, it's a farm management application. Um, a lot of you um, engage with poultry farmers, pig farmers, fish farmers, different types of farmers. And one of the number one issues um, which uh, farms face is actually proper management. A lot of farms fold up because they don't keep good records. They don't manage the farms properly, or maybe someone is just stealing from the farms. And one of the ways to solve this problem is to engage in proper farm management and proper um, farm record keeping. And to do that, we built this application to help uh, farms from across Nigeria to um, have um, a simple way to keep their records. So I'm going to share that with you now. So you can, this is a demo account and it's for demo purposes only. Um, you can actually sign up, like uh, I was discussing with Mr. President some time ago, that every small scale farmer who uses this application is completely free. So if you have a small farm with like a thousand birds or something like that, it's going to be completely free for you. Um, so you can create as many pens as you want, uh, especially for the larger farms. Uh, farms that have 100,000 birds, a million birds, 200,000 birds, 20,000 birds, you know, etc. But for this presentation, I would like to focus on the farm um, and a uh, farmer called Uchena. Um, so this one has three pens, as you can see. A pen with broilers, another one with layers, and another one with broilers. And you can name the pen. So you could actually create a pen and call this pen, um, pen four. Let's call it pen four. Uh, and let's say this pen has 10,000 birds, okay? And let's say, uh, okay, layers. And then we bought the birds from um, Amo or CHI or Agritech. So we just pick any one of them. And then let's say that the animals are probably um, 20 weeks old, 20 weeks, six days old, all right? So, so you see, I just created a pen. It's that simple. You see your opening stock here, and you see your closing stock. Now, um, something I want to show you is that with this application, uh, farmers can add records. So we've, we've built um, a tool that allows you to keep records. So this is an example of uh, pen one, which you can see here. So what we did actually was to study what um, poultry farmers from across the country have been doing. Um, a lot of them use notebooks. And I know some of you get work for feed companies and some of these fantastic companies who um, print out notebooks and give to um, farms um, as a form of CSR. So what we did was to build exactly a system that, that mimics that and also mimics um, Excel. But this time around, it's far more intelligent than Excel or a notebook, and it's actually safer. So I'm going to show you how. So for this demo account, right, this is a demo account. So let's say we want to add a record for today. Um, so you just simply select the dates. Today is um, seventh, and then your opening stock is automatic. So if you impute um, closings, maybe you add mortality of 20 birds, right? And maybe you give them 
let's say 7,900 liters of water. And um, this is for demo. And let's say when, as a vet doctor, this is where you impute or you ask the farm manager to impute their, the medications, if any medication was administered. You know, so um, if no, if no uh, medications you administer, let's say nail. And then as a bed doctor, this is here you also put remarks. Okay, now the closing stock automatically calculates, so you don't have to impute that. You just save. Now, the records added successfully. Now this is the record I just added now. That's it here. So you can add records for one year, two years, it's very easy to do. Uh, and again, one of the reasons we did this was that some time ago, we were trying to do a program called Farm Expert Program. And um, a lot of the vets complain about the fact that many times when they go to consult for farms, um, the owners of the farms do not necessarily have proper record to show, um, um, to give to their vets. So the vet sometimes doesn't actually know what happened on the farm, what kind of vaccine or drug has been used on the farm. And then sometimes um, the owners of the farm may lie you know, to the veterinarian, and that might lead to misdiagnosis, especially in cases where the vet is trying to consult remotely. So with this application, you can tell your farmers to use this. Um, like I said, it's completely free for small-scale farmers, but for those ones that are much bigger, uh, we we'll charge them a token so that we can keep this impact sustainable and keep on running, right? Um, so this is how it works for broilers, for layers, and any type of animal. Now, beyond that, um, the farm can also keep record of their expense of their sales. So if you sold eggs, this is where you're going to record it. Oh, I sold um, eggs. I sold 50 crates of eggs. I sold my live birds. I sold my um, bird droppings, whatever you sold. So it's so easy to add your sales. You know, I just select my dates. Let me say we sold birds yesterday. Okay? So let's say we sold um, eggs. Okay, and then let's say we sold um, 50 crates of egg um, at 900 naira or something like that. Um, let's say to Mr. Uh, Gomos or something, um, manager paid for it. Whatever remarks you want to add here, you just um, um, add them, all right? So everything displays here. The same thing works for expenses. This is expenses where the farm can capture. Now, beyond all these, as the owner of the farm, this is the most powerful part of the application. Now, when we started using this um, part of the application, a, lot, uh, a number of farmers, something happened to them. You know, so this is where you see the analytics. And can you see my cursor? You can sort by last days or last um, seven days or last 30 days. So let's say you say, select the last 30 days. The beauty of this is that if your farmer is using this, immediately there is a, an orange line on this graph, they will start calling their veterinarian. Doctor, something is happening in my farm. My beds are dying. And this is where the, the farm owner also gets to see the rates of mortality on your farm. And there's something about pictures. A wise man once said that a picture is worth a thousand words. You know, so this, this helps them to see you know, actually what's going on on your farm and to um, leverage the help of their vets to solve this problem. Um, the third solution which we have for you is um, something um, focused on um, telemedicine, which is something uh, really quite exciting that we've been working on for some time now, okay? So if you're a vet in Nigeria or you're a vet in Gombe, so long you have good internet, you can consult for anybody, any of your clients in Nigeria or abroad. So we've specifically built this solution. This, this is um, to demo to you, and then we're going to receive feedback from you on this also. And if you're interested in being a part of this, we're going to share a link before the end of this lecture to uh, indicate your interest on in whatever products um, you, you want. So yeah, um, people who own farms or own, own pets can come here and select the type of doctor they would like to work with. So this is the demo version, you know? And yeah, they can view your profile as a vet doctor. So you submit information about yourself, your years of experience and all that. So the client is gonna read this 
and then they are satisfied, they'll book you, all right? They'll select the dates they would like to um, work with you, and then they will select the time, all right? And when they do that, they proceed to pay. So if, for example, you are charging $50 an hour or $5,000 naira per hour, it depends on you, all you just need to do is to, um, is to, is to um, put that here, and then they can confirm and pay. So immediately they do that, it's going to show them how many hours they have left to um, get to you, and then they proceed to call, and you can have your consultation with them. It's almost like Zoom, but for very doctors, and you can also collect payments with this. You can chat with them if you want to chat, or you can um, um, do your calls with them. So it just depends on what um, you want. You know, so we're calling on experienced veterinarians, credible veterinarians from across the country who are interested in consulting for clients, so that if you are in Kaduna, you can consult for someone in Gombe or someone in Lagos or Ibadan or the East, you know, and all that. So, ladies and gentlemen, I um, I want to thank you for um, your um, attention. Um, I want Dr. Gali to um, come up to um, share. He has a wonderful presentation, which he's going to share with us today. Um, and then towards the end of both presentations, we're going to take questions. You know, and we're going to share the link to um, next steps. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ganita. Are you are you ready? Is Dr. Gani ready? Okay. Um, thank you very much, people, for the questions you asked. Um, so for this application, if you're interested in this application, uh, immediately after this call, we're going to send out uh, a message um, with the link with the link where you can just fill your um, name, contact details, and then um, we'll reach back to you. So, and then you should also specify um, if you want to use it to run your hospital or clinic, you want to use for private practice, or if you want to use it to run a state government um, hospital, and, you know, and all that. So just specify the capacity because it varies from small to large scale organizations. So, um, I would like to take some of the questions now. Um, is this, this app can be downloaded online? Is it compatible with all devices? Can it be accessed offline? Assuming you are on the field in the remote location. Uh, great initiative. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yusuf. Um, so if this specific application um, is online and it's um, strictly for private organizations. Um, this application can be uploaded on your own private server, you know, um, and it works online. It's, it's not um, to be used offline. Yeah. So the reason we did that was because um, some time ago we had visited a number of farms, especially farms in remote communities, and we observed that um, a lot of people still use WhatsApp. So if you can use WhatsApp, you can use this application, you can use the farm application. Um, and if you're on this call and you run an organization that works with thousands of farmers, um, this application um, um, farm, this um, farm management application, uh, we can have a deal together that allows you to use this tool to empower Congress of farmers, or to just uh, mention exactly uh, what you're interested in, and then we'll take things up from there. Um, okay. Um, okay, yes, thank you very much. That's a good question. Thank you very much, Dr. Taiwo. Thank you very much, Dr. Taiwo. Um, so, there are other questions some people might have. Um, one of them might be. Um, uh, for this specific application, right? Um, can I use it to manage my inventory? The answer to that question is yes. Um, can you use it to manage your client? Yes. In fact, this application is so good that your clients can have a, a separate account on your company website. On your company website. That's how good this application is. You know, so you can use it to manage your clients, whether you have 10 clients 
or a million clients. You can use it to manage um, any number of clients. So please, if you have questions, I'd like to see those questions in the chat. Okay. Um, someone is asking about how many farmers can these be used to manage? Um, this could be used to manage uh, as many farmers as you want. So um, it's actually um, unlimited. You can manage a thousand farmers, five thousand farmers, ten thousand farmers. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I want to join the president in welcoming everyone. Let me introduce the, the topic that we have. Is that which concerns all of us. We don't have to be a business veterinarian. Uh, at one point or another, we end up being business veterinarians. But um, it has to do with the mechanics of uh, prudent financial management in veterinary businesses. Uh, we can't be talk about any topic today without discussing COVID-19 because COVID-19 has brought us to where we are. Um, now we are doing all of this through virtual means, Zoom for, for, for this, and then uh, this is a part of the positive sides of uh, COVID-19. So, uh, there are quite a number of reasons for people to uh, criticize the, the style of management of the disease by the presidential task force of this country. Because um, for some of us, we do not expect that um, the disease should be reduced to numbers alone. Because on a daily basis, we see a uh, screen like this on television, like this was posted on the 2nd of July, 626. Um, numbers confirmed. That is not sufficient. It's good for us to be able to, uh, I would have expected that um, we should have the denominator. If you tell us that we have 626 new cases confirmed, then it's good to tell us from how many samples. That's the scientific mind. See, and when you just tell us that we have um, 626, and then you've now reflected the number of discharge cases, and the number of deaths in red bands, that frightens a lot. And that is not the spirit. One would have expected uh, that um, the number of testing centers, the number of samples should also be reflected. People are able to go to ratios that make a lot of uh, input on it. Anyhow, that is what we have, where we have found ourselves. Um, but we would not bother too much about that. We should be worried more about how it concerns us. So that's why we should do this course today. Well, the next slide. Uh, the question would be, why do we have to really discuss a topic like this at this time? A topic like this, the mechanics of prudent financial management is not for business veterinarians alone, it's for all of us. Because um, there were certain things that the curriculum we operated in school did not teach us. And that included the teaching the art in the science of veterinary practice. We have been well taught about veterinary medicine, but there is the art of it that drives the practice on the field. And that includes what other professionals know already. I'm talking about things like financial management. Um, we also look at things like critical thinking, which has to do uh, the, with the relationship we have with others. That's the slide before this one. And then we also have things that have to do with managing the, the mental well being of ourselves as veterinarians and the professionals, uh, the clients that come to us. We are too fast. Go back two slides before this one. Okay. So the next slide. 
because we were not taught all of these things in school, many of us come onto the field practicing veterinary medicine without knowing how to make money, the slide before this one, because nobody taught us how to make money. And then nobody taught us how to spend money because that's part of what critical thinking is all about. We need to know how to spend money. And then we also need to know how to manage the emotions of our clients who today have a Dr. Google who would have told them what they need to, what they think they need to know before they even consult us as veterinarians. Uh, there was a study that was carried out by the American Veterinary Medical Association. Uh, sorry, it was actually a, 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 co a collection of uh, professionals in the US that the American Veterinary Medical Association participated in it. And they wanted to find out why the, the, the rate of suicide by professionals. And veterinarians were high up there as professionals who commit suicide in the United States. We don't have such experiences here anyway. But it is because many of us don't even know how to manage. When the first time I lost a, a dog, it took me a very big prayers to be able to look up to the client to announce to him that his dog had died. So we, nobody taught us in school how we should manage such emotions in our clients and then in ourselves. So all of these things we need to reflect in the curriculum going forward. Now, talking about how to make money, which is very important, that's the bottom line. If you're a professional and you don't have the money to spend, then you have not, you will not be able to encourage fish body veterinarians or body professionals to tow your line. So we need to know how to make money. Then we need to know how to spend the money we make. So if I put this quiz forward, that how many dogs would you vaccinate to earn one million naira? I have a lawyer friend who used to tell me that all he needs to do was to look for a political, a political case, and then he takes a percentage, and then he gets a million from there. So, but how, how do we do that as veterinarians? So, have we ever tried to look around to say, okay, even if we have to choose vaccination alone as an income source, how many dogs do we have to vaccinate that will give us one million naira? I have tried to do a calculation here. Uh, if we have DHLPP as the uh, subject matter now, uh, we charge 5,000 Naira for a, a shot. I know the highest cost of DHLPP in the market now is about 1,500. Not many people will charge 5,000 Naira per, per dog. Okay? But assuming we charge for, this, for the purpose of this illustration, if we charge 1,500, then we are already having a gross profit of 3,500 Naira that looks like an income for us. That's income actually, but that's not profit. So if you now look at the number of dogs we have to vaccinate to earn just 1 million Naira from the use of DHLPP, then we are looking at 286 dogs. Then if we are lucky to have um, a client that is very loyal to us and he has puppies that will have to take three doses each time, I mean, for the, for, to, to, to I mean, a minimum of three doses, then we are looking at having a minimum of 95 puppies before we can make a million naira. That's very instructive. How many dogs do we really vaccinate in a month? But this is not all that are the income sources for vegetarians, but assuming we take this, let's know exactly how we analyze this. Next slide. So from the one million naira that looks like profit, that is actually just a gross revenue. Even though we have paid for the cost of vaccine there, but there are so many other overheads, expenses that we need to meet. We need to pay salaries. So part of this income must be used in paying salaries. Part of it must be done costing for to pay renters for the, for the offices we use. The depreciation of assets, all those things we have bought over the years, our chairs, our tables, they depreciate over the years. Part of that, which looks like gross income, must be used as expense to meet all those needs. Even the cost of funds, the cost of 3,500, sorry, the, the uh, 1,500 Naira in buying the vaccine is not just for free. We need to think that that money has a cost on it. 
assuming we took the loan from the bank to, 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 to do that transaction, we would have paid interest on it, which are many things some of us don't put into mind when we are making a pricing before the clients. Transportation. Perhaps we had to travel or send somebody or we went to the park to go and collect the vaccine before we brought it to our clinic. Those are little means by which our expenses build up. Therefore, the profit for vaccinating 286 dogs is not 1 million. It's much, much less than that. So the real profit that we should think about must be such that should cover our consumption and our savings. We must, the, the, the consumption includes all these overheads I've talked about. And of course, there are other family consumptions. We need to go home. We need to meet family bills. Our children need to go to schools. We need to pay fees. Neighbors will come to us. These are all part of consumption, which eats off into our gross revenue. And then we must have savings. Next slide. Which we must, from which we must use to renew the, invest, the, the, the business we have done. So because consumption is a deficit. So when you look at consumption vis-a-vis -vis the savings we make, a lot goes into consumption. It's a deficit. Money is being lost. So, and that service is very narrow. We need to do two services, which is very important here, because that's the only credit balance we have after all the expenditures. So we must have precautionary service, such that during emergencies, we will not run into difficulties. A lot of those who required palliatives during the COVID-19 were caught other ways. All of us were caught other ways anyway, but those who had precautionary savings found a way to manage their ways out without waiting for, for palliatives. And that was why uh, having to follow the standard um, uh, management of, the, of such outbreaks, pandemics, like they did in the West, could not have worked here because the social security in the West could take care of such emergencies. But here, such pandemic, such outbreaks will require everyone to have a precautionary savings that should have taken care of such emergencies without requiring government palliatives. Then the general savings from which we must renew, we must renew, we must go back into spending for those things that gave us the gross revenue. Next slide. Because we must reinvest. So if your profit margin does not meet your precautionary savings and does not meet your, your reinvestment uh, funds, then of course you have only just sold at the price you bought, you've not made any profit. So we, we call it real profit. It's not just the profit of uh, plus or minus. We are running too fast. So why, why do we have businesses failing? Veterinary businesses, why are they not succeeding? Why are many of us failing in veterinary businesses? Next slide. I have listed four items here. One, the bandwagon effect of people because you have other veterinarians who have decided to set up that you think you must set up. Have you done your feasibility study? So that's a bandwagon effect because others do it. No, if others do it, you must learn from those who do it and find out the weak chains or the weak links in the chain, which you must modify to make you succeed. Because what, we went, what he went through or she went through may not be the exact track that you have to follow when you go into business. So it's just not because somebody has set up a veterinary clinic that you must have to set up a veterinary clinic. You must do some feasibility study and find out what you must know. Then financial illiteracy is a big deal. Many of us are financially illiterate. And that is the truth. We are brilliant. And that is why the best of uh, veterinary uh, students will not come out to be the best of practitioners on the field because of financial illiteracy. People don't know how to put discipline into their funds. Am I communicating? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people don't know how to put discipline to their phones. Anybody who comes, they want to make, they want to beg for money, you dip your hand to your pocket, you give money to them. That is in discipline, in business. So financial illiteracy means you must know that fund which must not be spent, must not be touched. And then you must know how to compute your figures. Just yesterday, uh, the chairman of EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, was taken to uh, DSS for interrogation. I even learned that he has been suspended now. 
And um, he was the, the report against him, one of the critical reports, was that the Minister of Justice, Attorney General, said the, the report, because he supervises that uh, parastata, that the report he presented financially showed a surplus. And Magu was thinking, because that was a surplus, it should be applauded. I was watching the, this lawyer on television yesterday saying that because there was a surplus in the account, therefore they should, they should rather clap for him. That is not financial accounting. There shouldn't be surplus, but there should not be. I have a table I will show very soon, but we need to look at that later on. Now, impulsive decision taking. People, many of us, I'm also beaten once in a while. You see what is good, you want to go for it. Have you planned for it? Business discipline means you must plan for what you want to spend on. If you just choose to buy because it is good, what is good may not be right. It may not be right for your business. So if you just choose because you have to buy because it is good, a good car, you know, of course you, 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 you must find a way to pay for it. And that will eat into your business uh, accounting. Okay? So people don't know how to do service management. And that's a very big deal. Then, of course, one of the last items that creates business failures in Nigeria is systemic shocks, which could come from federal government, from state government, from local government, or the governments. They come with multiple taxation. They come with impossible policies. I mean, like we have multiple foreign exchange rates in the country today. These are distractions to business investments. So all these shocks come. And then we also have the natural shocks, which come through things like pandemic. So when you look at all of this, you need to score yourself to find out how you stand. Next slide. So if we have this challenge before us, we must look at the valves that should prevent us from failing in our veterinary businesses. Because this is a beautiful business, I can say so. And I'm, I'm in a position to say so. I've been in veterinary practice for 35 years and I'm in a position to say so. We must invest in technology. We must invest in relevant software to manage our affairs. A lot of things we do manually don't work again today. All our veterinary teaching hospitals must key into, um, uh, we shouldn't do physical clacking alone again. We must key into what uh, uh, Blessing must have told you in, re in respect of uh, softwares to manage our practices. That is what they do elsewhere. So we can't remain static and begin to do things manually and expect we should grow. The clients we relate with, they are digitalized. So you would now, they will now come to you and then you think you're going to deal with them manually. They will pay you manually. But when you digitalize and you charge them, they will pay your digital bills. So we need to invest in technology in our practices. We need to build control into our investment. A lot of money is lost through the the thieving and stealing by our workers. So there must be controls. If you must put on a CCTV to make sure wherever you are, you can monitor your, your practice, please put it on. You'll be able to know who came into the clinic. You can ask questions. They will even know that you're also monitoring them. So controls have to be put into our investment. And many of us don't do all of these things. We must identify a niche and have a value addition. So even if we must copy ourselves because I have a pet shop, then you want to have a pet shop. You must look for some things that should be different from what I'm currently doing that will make you make more money. Then we must have, like I said, strict business ethics and discipline. That is very important. Don't, don't just give money to people anyhow. Where's the money coming from? You just give money anyhow. You want to steal money? Because if you give, you must find a way to, to plug it back. So you must plan to give. Nobody's praying for emergencies. I'm not saying emergencies will not come. But if they must come, then you must, look for, you must go back to that of precautionary savings to go and look for some of it, not all of it, to assist. Because without you, those needs will also be met. Then the good record keeping, all records, all records must be kept where natural fathers will make us professionals. If you don't have your records intact, records of your clients, and of course, when you digitalize, you do it better, that is what makes you a profession, professional. Then the good financial records also will be, I'll show you a, a table now. Next slide. So this table is, of course, a table that ordinarily would look like what is good. Uh, you have a 15 naira as income. In actual fact, this is supposed to be a quiz for all of us. 
and then you have your record, you, 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 you draw the lines, you have the table there. The column one is saying, how much did you spend from the 50 naira, 20 naira? Then you have a balance of 30 naira. That is true. Then the second column, you said, OK, you spent 15 naira from 30. You have 15. That is true. Then the column three, you spent nine naira from 15. You have six balance left. Then you spend six, you have zero balance left. Then you now come to total. OK, you draw down. Then you have 50 naira as income, as you can see there, what you have spent. Then you have the balance. You have 51. Where is this extra one error coming from? If you look at this table, this is what uh, Magu may have taught should be should be you should be clapped for. That one error you have to find where it's coming from, because that's surplus. You have 50 naira, you are you are now having a balance of 51 naira. How did it come? Who gave you the one naira? Next slide will tell us that this is a wrong table to keep. You don't keep a table like this in financial management. Next slide, the kind of table you keep to be a table of income and expenditure. That is trial balance. That is where you can balance your, your, your account without having to search for the one error that came from the sky. So if you look at this, it is income and expenditure. That's what the financial experts who look at your books must give to you. They must give you a total of what you draw down your income. It must total with what your expenditure is. You don't have a table of spent and balance. You have a table of income and expenditure. This is the way it's supposed to be. Next slide. All these things look small, we think we do them, but most times we don't really do all these things. And these are challenges that we need to be able to uh, address in our practices. Uh, well, I'm being forced to talk about loans because it's important. Wherever you see loan, please take it. Next slide. Because if you have a cost on your fund, chances are that you manage those funds better on. If you see any loan anywhere and the interest is good, take the loan because you will manage it better than the free money that came to you. But before you get the loan, I can tell you from experience that what is most important between you and the bank that is going to give you the loan is relationship. The banks must ask, must investigate what kind of relationship you have with them. Some people just carry a mix of millions of naira, they deposit it in the, they deposit it to their bank, in their service account, maybe fixed account, maybe even current account, and they walk away. And then they come again next month, they add another 200,000 or add more money to it. That is not a good relationship that the bank wants to have with you. If the bank is going to analyze what relationship is, because there's a relationship manager that deals with things like this, he would look at how the flow, your income and out, your in and out flows into your account looks like. Okay? We have, for instance, if I buy a recharge card now, I don't buy the chart card, I just, I just recharge through my account. That is seen as a transaction by the bank. So if I have to buy about 50 um, uh, refill, I mean, re, re, I mean, to buy 50 airtime for my phone using my account, that is counted for me as 50 times transactions. And that's good relationship for the bank, not the value of the money. The guy who puts in one million naira comes again this month and puts another 200 or 500. If he's applying for a loan, the relationship manager's report would only record two transactions in two months. And for the innocent guy who has just been doing uh, 10,000 today, 5,000 tomorrow, 1,000 naira recharge card, he would have had about 50 or 60 I mean, transactions. And that would qualify him to be considered for loan that the guy who, has, who is a multimillionaire, who is just thinking that it's just about money. So we need to have a relationship with our bank. We need to learn not to make our pockets, our bad dad to be our bank manager. Many of us put our money so in the drawers. We just say, okay, 5,000 is too small to send to the bank. No, take it to the bank. Let somebody do it for you. That's a relationship which you, you they harvest in future. Then we must have a feasibility study that the bank will read the background and they will not even have questions to ask you. We are professionals. I can't write a feasibility study and then the bank manager or, or anybody analyzing will come and query me. What does he want to know about, uh, about the, the point of play? I would have been able to write things that with technicality, I, and they only require me to come and explain to them. So you must have a project background that must very much give you 
uh, the courage and confidence to be able to discuss with your manager when you are talking about loans. The, the probability of success of your business, it depends on the business you want to do anyway, but if it's business that have to do with veterinary subject matters and you are a veterinarian, you should teach them, you should let them know that you will succeed. They should not tell you, if I want to buy an X-ray machine for my, for, my, for, for my hospital, which I recently, I'll talk about that, because that was where I went to the CBN to look for CBN loan. I should tell them how many times I expect to use the, the X-ray machine in a month. I have a realistic projection of how to pay them their money back. They, should tell, they will tell me they don't know how I work. So we must justify the probability of success of the loan we want to take. And that's part of the ingredients of the feasibility study that we require. Then you must be, that serviceability means they must also know you. They won't come to your office five times and they won't see you once. They must know you, they, they must trust you, they must be able to service you because they must, they go around once in a while and they want to know their customers. They call it KYC, know your customers. So if they come 10 times and they can't find you two times, you are not serviceable, you are risky. Then you must have a payment plan against a particular timeline that must meet what the banks do will, pre, will, will see as a viable business to do with you. If I'm going to pay you back in two years, I should be able to find a way to tell you that, look, in two years, I'm going to run this payment plan with you. You can argue with me as, okay, let's do it in 18 months, but I'll tell you, that's two years I have. But if you say 18 months, I will go ahead and try. After 18 months and I cannot meet up, I will tell you, I told you before. So you must have a payment plan with timelines time that matches the kind of project you want to invest in. Next slide. So having said this, evidence of previous trustworthiness is very important. If you have taken money before in other places, when you are writing your proposal for loan, mention it there. If you are sincere, truly, you wouldn't be shy to do so. But if you know you are taking money from a bank and you did not pay back, don't think this bank will not be able to know. Just like uh, when people are applying for visa in uh, Schengen visa, there are 15 countries who make, make up Schengen, and then you apply for, maybe for France, they find a way to move around your application in all the other 14, 14 countries. If you had messed up in one country, they, you, they will catch you. The same thing, banks have this network. The intelligence, financial intelligence unit department in Central Bank, they all go to that intelligence unit. So if you are applying for a loan, they will find out from the FIU if you had been a, a very bad debtor in the past. So, but if you have been good, showcase it in your feasibility study, a proposal, that I, I had taken money in the past from other places and this is my proof and I paid back. Then if you have collateral, you can also tell them. If you don't have, also tell them. Many people collect loans today without collaterals because banks do not have many people approaching them for bank loans. So if you have collateral, tell them. If you don't have, tell them. Just mention it, your feasibility. You'll be surprised that they will, they will be, give you proposals as to how to join you in managing the funds and they will still give you the loan. The reliable referees, very important. Reference letters, very important. Not necessarily guarantors, but letters of people of credible attitude, characters who can talk on your behalf. Get such letters, make it part of your feasibility uh, proposal. The guarantor if you have, then previous, um, I can't see what is there again. Abonji Godwin is raising up his hand. You know, so then you need a task clearance certificate. You need to do things corporately so that all of these things will add to what you use to, to, to justify your, your reliability and your character. Next slide. Now I will round up on this loan issue by talking about the CBN COVID-19 loan because I, I, I applied for it and I got it. And many veterinarians applied for it and, I, and they got it. At least if not one or two, that I also introduced that they should go and apply, they got their own. What did we do that was different from those who did not apply? Okay? I've, I've seen a question somewhere in another platform and the, 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 doc, the vet wanted us to know why the CBA not give veterinary doctors loan directly? I'll maybe I'll answer that with this one now. First, you need to apply online. Two, um, Blessing, can you take away the, uh, the, the, the hand raised from the screen? Oh, sure, sure, we can do that. Yeah, okay, thank you. 
So we, 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 we need to apply online. We don't even, I, I didn't know anybody in CBN. I didn't talk to anybody in Nassau Merchant Bank. So we, we, we apply online. That is fantastic for everybody. Then you do your business plan, like I've just said. You can't write the way I have just described, and the bank will not look at you. Because they don't know your business. You know your business more than them. Then you must have a three-year audit report. Not the one you will now go and generate because of the loan. I have audit report for the last 30 years or thereabout. I didn't know I was going to need it. But when they now required it as part of the criteria, I just presented it without any, any problem at all. If, you have, if I had gone to manufacture one, of course, the financial accountant would charge me more. And of course, the analyst from the CBI will also see the dates and suspect some uh, uh, forgery in there. Then you must have your tax layer certificate too tight. If you have a business, you must pay the, 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 uh, the company income tax. They call it CIT. Then you also have to pay your personal income tax, PIT. Many of us don't pay all these taxes. And that is just not right. I was looking through the reports of uh, Africa's uh, uh, tax to GDP ratio. And Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio for this for last year, 2019, was just 7% compared to South Africa that had 27%. And the average for the whole Africa was 16%. So you can imagine where we are. We only had 7%. People don't pay taxes. So you have to pay your business, your, cost, your, your company income tax, and you also have to pay your, your personal income tax, PIT. These are laws that we must follow. Must follow. The many of us are not doing that. And you want the CBI to give you the loan, or you want the banks to give you the loan. How do they know that you are even a corporate person? They won't trust you. Next slide. So the CBI loan, like we applied for it. Again, they required bank statement for three months. That's very, very considerate. Many other banks will require six months. But the CPN law required only three months. And many of our brothers don't even, and sisters don't even have the bank statement for three months. What they had was scanty, unfilled, one page of about three, four transactions. And you want the want government to give you loan? You will, you will chop the money. Then the personal guarantee has to be what you yourself is saying that you will do to meet the loan you have taken. I wrote mine. All the guys, all the vets that we talked together wrote their personal guarantees that, look, because I'm a veterinary doctor and I'm in practice, I will pay back your money. That's personal guarantee. And that was acceptable to CBA. Then the reference letters, like I said, and then the very flexible collateral, the, C the CBN uh, uh, COVID-19 loan did not expect you to go and bring documents of the house. They didn't ask me for that. The best they asked me was if I had a car, and I said, OK, yes, I just looked for document of one of the weather beating cars in the house, and I took it to them. I told them I'm going to even come to investigate. And they took it, they just put a copy and gave me back the originals. So that was pleasurable enough. There was no reason why most veterinarians should not meet this criteria. Those who didn't have cars to present, they were asked as a little as generator sets. Do you have generator sets? And, they, and they, that was sufficient as collateral for them. Just to have something they will put in the books to also meet their own checklist. That was flexible. So I did all of this, next slide. And then, of course, the, the application was considered. And sitting down in my office, a letter like this came to me, that your SME targeted credit facility offer letter, I mean, when it has been approved. Yes, of course, what I requested was not given to me. And for more than a month, I did not touch the money. I was protesting inside me. I wanted the highest, they told everybody, they told the world that they could give up to 25 million naira, and I applied for that. But what they gave to me was just a paltry 10% of that. But when I realized that relationship will matter, I could collect that money and return it back to the bank account, and then that would, have, that would count for me tomorrow as a reliable client with the bank. I took the loan. Some of our colleagues didn't even get up to 2.5. They got 1.8, they got 2 million. And we all discussed among ourselves that please just take it for the sake of marking record and then making it a positive thing for us in future. Next slide. In conclusion, having said all of this, what do we now see? We must take our veterinary business serious. Don't think it will be different from other. We must do our businesses 
like others do their businesses. We must obey our business rules, which includes that we must pay taxes. We must fulfill corporate responsibilities. We must submit VAT returns. Veterinary services are not vatable. There are some things we do, like supplies, that are vatable. So if you must, you have collected money back, pay back from VAT, you should pay it back to government. It's a law that we must submit VAT returns on a monthly basis, even if it is nil returns. So people don't do all of these things. And then you now think you apply for loan, you just get it. You wouldn't know when the government will wait for you tomorrow. So we must learn how to make money. Like I've just said, we must learn how to make money. We must, you, can't, you can't be a professional and continue to lament all, all, all year round. You must learn how to make money. We must know how to spend money. We must know how to keep our records accurately. And we must digitalize. We must establish a good bank relationship. Next slide. And we must pay our taxes. Oh, thank you very much. This is the end of the slides. It's my privilege. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gani. You thank have you done much. so well. You have done so well, honestly. Uh, considering the challenges and all that you're able to wrap it up, thank you so much. So maybe uh, because of time, we'll just ask, um, please, if you have a question, you can just raise your hands up and then uh, Dr. Gani will take your, your question on myself. The, the, uh, blessing. Hello? Yes. Yes, sir, I can hear uh, you. Okay. Uh, let me start with uh, our immediate past president. Dr. Okay. Honorable Dr. Gordon Aboni, his hand has oh. been up for some while. Okay, Dr. Aboni uh, is here. Yeah, I would like to give him the floor to talk. Okay, okay. Yes, uh, Dr. Aboni, sir. Dr. Aboni, sir. Sir, so you have been muted. Thank you very much. I don't know whether you're okay. hearing me. Coincidentally, yes. sorry, sir. You can see yes. it. Coincidentally, today is Dr. Abonyi's birthday. Oh. Uh, <laughs> That's I a nice one. I would like to have to join me in <laughs> congratulating him for, for adding a few minutes on his years uh, of that. And uh, happy birthday, sir. Happy birthday, sir. <clears throat> Same from here. Thank you. Yeah, I... You have the floor, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Dr. Ghani, thank you very much, uh, our global counselor, for this uh, yet another eye opener in our veterinary business. I, I, in fact, I enjoyed every bit of the presentation and uh, uh, the advice is well taken. Uh, we, it is something interesting that as we strive to ensure that our colleagues are employed in the government service those that uh, right from the beginning chose to be in the, <clears throat> the private service are still doing the profession uh, 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 proud in so many ways, like uh, the success story uh, we are recording from your practice. And uh, when you talk business, one will even think, uh, uh, you know, uh, a banker or somebody, uh, an expert in the corporate world is talking to us better. <laughs> So I think I just congratulate you for this beautiful presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, I assure our colleagues that we also make it efforts to ensure that those that choose to be in government uh, uh, are still accommodated in government. Yesterday, uh, we, through our pressure, we were able to get in with the government despite the COVID uh, restrictions to organize, uh, you know, interview uh, pro, uh, program for the 20 veterinarian positions they have declared for uh, employment into the state service. So the mm -hmm. process of recruiting them uh, is on, uh, uh, despite the fact that only 20 vacancies were declared. We had 150 of our colleagues sitting for for the mm. recruitment uh, examination, but at least that is just like Ghani said, uh, even if the number is not up to our expectation, we just take something as a way of starting. So uh, I'm, I'm proud of uh, the uh, uh, practitioners, 
and uh, from what Ghani is doing, uh, those that cannot get government employment should not lose hope. They have to go into it and uh, with uh, due diligence, uh, success story like we are recording our Garovet can also be recorded as fear. So thank you very much. I enjoyed every bit of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Abonisa. I think uh, from our agenda, after Dr. Ghani's presentation, we'll have a Q&A, which we've already done for the presentation, the blessing with. So I think anybody that has a question for Dr. Ghani should type it and send it in the chat box so that Dr. Ghani can respond appropriately. Dr. Ganisa, I think I saw a question that was directed to you. Let me scroll back a bit and see if I can find it. Okay. Okay, there was someone that is asking if they can get a copy of the PowerPoint shared of the presentation. Which if you yes. have a function, <clears throat> I think anybody that registered for the or it will be emailed a link to the presentation. Also, I mean, uh, context, yeah. uh, okay, thank you very much, sir. Yes. Okay, there is a question I saw just a second. Let me find it. There's a question that was asked, and um, uh, the income tax that you mentioned during your presentation. The question goes, sir, for those in public service, how will they get three years audit report and tax clearance certificates? Well, um, those in public service are, have been paying their taxes regularly. That's number one. And then um, they are not going to apply to the CBN for the MSME loan. MSME is the small and medium scale enterprises loan. They will apply for the household, uh, they call it household uh, owners or something like that, loan. That one was there. In the requirement for that loan, there is no CIT, there is no company income tax required. But of course, your personal income tax will be demanded for those who are working. And of course, like I said, civil servants have been paying because they deduct their tax at source. It's the business people who are in private parties that don't pay taxes, most of them. But the people who are earning salaries from one source or another, they can apply for the personal income tax certificate for three years, and they will definitely have that given to them. And they will apply for the household loan, income owner's loan, and they will give it to them. I think that answers that. Thank you very much, sir. There's a Kinde, Mike Kinde, has a, is raising his hand to ask a question. So uh, I think we'll take him and then we'll give Dr. Ballard the floor to, to okay. comment or to give us his comment. Then we we'll round it up. Already taken almost two hours of the day. Mm. Okay, sorry. Before Kinde, Mike Kinde asks his question. Is that since I'm the one managing my farm, and I just pay only my CIT, I will be exempted from PIT. That's another question for you, sir. Yeah, it, no, nobody that earns income is exempted from PIT. PIT is personal income tax. If you are bankrupt, then you declare it. Your financial transaction will show it. You must have an income to exist. If the income is not sufficient, you declare, uh, even if you have a business that is not making enough income, that's what they call statement of affairs, which the financial consultant will write on your behalf. That statement of affairs will state the fact that yes, your income, you are, you, are, you, are, you are even in debt in the businesses you are doing. So you present it to the tax, the Federal Inland Revenue Service. They understand that. But Having no communication at all means that you are, you are exempting yourself from taxation. And that is actually, is a, we are, is, it is a, we, there's a law against exemption. I mean, if you self-exempt yourself. So if you have a poultry farm, 
If you struggle to pay your company income tax, that is good. That means corporately you can take your loan. But in other areas where the need for the personal income tax will be required, you, 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 have, you have to explain yourself why you are not paying your personal income tax. So you should still find a way to pay your PIT by declaring your income. What they do is to give you forms which will make you assess yourself. You see, the law is very free if we apply it well. The, Fed, the Inland Revenue Service by the state or the federal will give you, they will invite you every year and ask you to fill and assess yourself. What did you earn? So it is you that will now tell them what you have earned. If you lie, they may investigate because they, may, they, they will find where they have they've taken your, they call it withholding tax. If, for instance, you have done businesses where you paid some money as withholding tax there, and then you do not declare that you did a business there, they, they, there will be a reflection of the withholding tax in, their, in the books against your name. So they, they will now tell you that you have lied. And if you lie, they will give you what they call BOJ, best of judgment. They will now, give, they will now be the one to tax you based on the way they feel of you. But if you have been sincere in declaring your income from all sources, even if you had donations, if you had a gift, put it there. Some of them are exempted from, tax, from being taxed. But you must find a way to pay some tax to government. So that's it. Okay, sir. There's another question that says, with the negative effect of the current pandemic on livestock production, what is the probability of new startups having access to the CDM for the Nigerian loan since other reports of a span of three years are needed? So this is this question is directed on new startups that want to access the loan. Yes, the, the, the new the new starters, the provision is also there. They said supply your your company contract for three years and you have not done business for three years. Declare it like that, but prove it. Show evidence, attach your certificate, your DVS certificate, that shows that you graduated in the, in the, in, in the, within the last three years. That, that's enough justification of the claim you would have made in your business plan. But if you, you, you just tell them you don't have a, a task, if you have not paid tax clearance because you are not qualified to pay tax, sorry, what am I saying? If you don't have, you, you, can, you can get a tax clearance certificate without paying tax. Let me tell you that. Because if you are not qualified to pay tax, you have, all you need to do is to apply to the uh, FIRS or the State uh, Inland Revenue Service, and then you declare your position that you are not qualified to pay tax by the virtue of the fact that you just graduated. And of course, they will give you a clearance certificate. That is, and they will write 000 payments. But to be a clearance certificate, by the authority who should know that you are not qualified to pay money. You know, then you attach it to your application and they will see it. If it is genuine, they will, they will, they will treat it as good. But putting nothing in that column and there is a checklist against that item, they will, they will, they will mark it wrong as zero or not supplied. They will know that you just finished from school because you've not, I mean, you've not given the government law, I mean, government is instrument to prove that reality. Well, thank that you very is. much, Dr. Dani, for the very insightful presentation and the questions. I think my, anybody my president, that has- In the absence of uh, any other question, for instance, let me say this, because there was a question on the platform which I referred to, and the person wanted to know why the past leaders of the association and the council could not arrange a special load for veterinarians. I made the response on that platform that I will address it at this time. The truth of the matter is, I wish the director of veterinary services uh, is here now at the federal department. There have been previous attempts to create special loads for veterinarians. They called one attempt PACE, PACE. It was a World Bank sponsored arrangement for veterinarians alone. And all the states, they started with some pilot states, about eight states, and it spread to all other states. I can tell you very sadly that many veterinarians disappointed, even when there was no collateral submitted, except you have a photocopy of DVM certificate, many veterinarians did not pay the money back. And that was supposed to be a revolving fund which the World Bank gave to Nigeria just for veterinarians alone. 
and we could, they, could, they, could, they couldn't realize the, 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 the value of the money they brought in, and that ended it. So we need to talk to ourselves. Even in, in-house, we have some of us who are not doing things right, and they're not looking for tomorrow for the future of the profession. They didn't pay the money back. In Delta State, we had to, uh, we had to use the instrument, instrument of threat to get some of them to pay in, 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 in bits and pieces. So it's, yeah, most of these things, we, we, it, they, are, they are good ideas. If we have such ideas, don't think they had not existed in the past. It only means some people had already messed them up and they're no longer available for future generations. But it can be done again, I don't know, if we can build the kind of trust that the bankers would believe in for us especially. Thank you, my president. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ghani, for the very wonderful presentation and the insight on the CBLA. I think anybody that has the required, since you've given the loader of the, what is required for you to access that loan and needs any further clarification, uh, reach out to Dr. Ghani and we'll be able to help uh, that person. Uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Bala Mohammed to the floor. He is the chairman of FCT Capture and also Dr. Bala is the vice president of the Veterinary Council of Nigeria. Dr. Bala Mohammed, sir, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Mr. President. And uh, my leader and elder, uh, Dr. Professor Ghani Enahoro. <laughs> I, I can't, uh, but thank you. I mean, I look forward to right from when I saw that the notice was posted and that you are going to be talking, I say, oh, I must not miss this. I'm supposed to be in another meeting now, but you know, it's always a wonderful thing that is something that we can always borrow from you. you. Before I make a remark, I, I got a lot of younger colleagues here joining, but I also have a very senior colleague seated by my side who has been itchy and uh, wanting to say one thing, just maybe uh, 30 seconds, then before I, I make my remark. Dr. Omar Konobi. Thank you very much, Bala. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, my, my brother, Ghani. I can see, and I can say very proudly, we're only the carry last. Um, you, have, you have just done something very beautifully within a space of uh, maybe 10 minutes in that presentation. But you have, you, like, uh, like Kabbalah said earlier, you know, nobody could be more professorial than, uh, than you on this. You are on point. All I want to say is to commend you, to thank you for this, and to, to say that you are an encouragement to so many people, including even those of us that are in public service who are not actually into, into practice, practical practice, so to speak. Your presentation has actually touched me, and um, um, it has brought to the fore, once again, the need for closer collaboration between uh, uh, public and private the practices interfacing in such a way that um, um, those of us in, um, in, uh, in, 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 in public service can learn from what you are doing, the practical practice that you are doing in, the, uh, in your practices. And um, maybe we may have something to offer to the private practitioners as well in the, in the area of uh, administration. The feasibility study that you talked about is something that uh, we do a lot in public service and um, uh, writing proposals and the rest of it and how to go about it. So you see, it becomes a win-win situation for everybody. I thank the national president for, for organizing this. And um, um, I thank the younger ones who, are, who, who, who found time to participate in this. I'm sure everybody has got something to take home. Uh, I, I, I've asked Dr. Bala already that uh, please, if there is uh, the opportunity to share this document, I would like to have it. I, I would like to, to have an in-depth um, uh, reading on it. Thank you so much, and thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank, thank, you very much. thank you so much. Yes. So uh, sorry, I. Sorry, Dr. Bala, I mean, like, uh, so like, let me. Okay. Let me, I'm sorry. That I can see a hand up from Dr. Labody Thomas. 
Uh, he's based in U.S. He's uh, one of our very great ambassadors there. He was my classmate, and he's, he says he wants to say a thing or two. Would you please permit him? Oh, yes, sir. Please, sir. Please. Dr. Thomas. Uh, I can't see him. Can you unmute him, sir? Bless you. Please unmute Dr. Thomas. Hola, yeah. Dr. Thomas. Yeah, yeah he's unmute. Dr. Thomas. Dr. Thomas, yeah. sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm really excited and very pleased to be part of this um, meeting. Uh, we're still uh, here in the morning time in U.S., Florida. Um, Dr. Ganye Enaro was my classmate, and uh, we were also both in the uh, Tether Hall together. Um, I'm uh, really impressed with the presentation, and um, primarily the need to emphasize integrity in everything we do. Uh, honesty is very, very vital. It cannot be overemphasized. And um, for those in um, uh, small animal practice, uh, when a client brings in a patient, uh, your, the dog or cat into your practice, and they just requesting for vaccinations or a particular, I mean, um, uh, thing to do, apart from their request, you as a vet and a, as an entrepreneur, you must do your physical examination on that dog or cat very well from the nose of the dog to the tail of the dog. And then you have your list of problems. So apart from what they are requesting for, you now have at the back of your mind, one, two, three, four things that they still need to do. And then you can now present this to them and then make them to take their decision. And this is how you can really, you know, have a cost benefit ratio in your practice and uh, they will still be very, very proud of you. So this is just a, 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 a comment I just want to uh, pass across. I'm really very uh, happy to be part of this, and I pray that God will continue to take us to higher ground in Jesus' name. Thank you for all the organizers, and to my dear friend, uh, congratulations. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Thomas, uh, for the kind words. We really appreciate it. Hello. Uh, Dr. Abulasa, you have the floor, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Elder Thomas. I, I think, you know, I'm just excited with uh, all these contributions coming because even if you are doing well and then you have elders coming to say, do it this way, you are on track, it makes you really feel very comfortable in the flight. And this is what exactly is playing out. You know, we're just discussing in the background, exactly 7th of July, 2019, myself, that is exactly a year today, myself and the late president, Professor Bello Age, we were in the Netherlands to discuss how entrepreneurs will be assisted, you know, in doing this thing. So it is just a coincidence Having, uh, what is it called? Having a uh, uh, professor, because we, we, we went on the invitation of that with uh, 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 invitation of uh, Gabriel Varga, former president of uh, World Veterinary Association, who was using his company to discuss a number of things. And the president had in mind something like this that we are discussing today. So it is, a, again, a thing of joy. Bello Age is no more today, but that we have a lot of people who stand better opportunity. I mean, uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Gane Nauro is also uh, a, a world leader, being a counselor at the World Veterinary Association, in representing us, and then some of these things we can always bring to fore. And that is why I said I am excited because when I also got Dr. Thomas, Bode Thomas, talking to us from the United States, Mr. President, I will assure you that we are on a nice track. I will go back with this presentation to some of those guys that promised us last year in 
in making sure that this kind of a thing run because we got an approval from Gabriel Varga that 50 young veterinarians or businesses will be supported in a way. And, and it was at the instance of this, uh, the slide you are showing will also you know, explains it. And I will go back to it, not only because today I'm also the vice president of the council, but that today we also have our own by, I mean, our own uh, erudite uh, professor, Gane Nahoro, who is also proposing in the same line with Gabriel Varga. Let us push this together. And uh, if you also look at the presentation by, by, by Mene Blessing and then presentation by Gane Nahoro, these are things that we need to have. Minimum, con I mean, minimum corporate content minimum, uh, 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 why is it called, uh, auditing of what we do and what our companies do is just the platform that will, will get you anything from anybody, anywhere. And I'm happy that these two presentations are coming at the right time. I am uh, going to, as an Oliver Twist, on behalf of all those who participated today, I will beg our president that he must scale up this kind of presentation. It could be twice monthly or it could even be once monthly where we some of these elders and erudite uh, practitioners to come and share with us on how they can best handhold us out of the murky waters of the practice. I will want to stop here, but also to impress on many blessings. Luckily for us as vet, I am uh, a member of the advisory board of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, what is it called, uh, Vets Act. And we are going to be asking that most of these softwares that you share with us, vets should be able to like access them. And then you should also help us. And uh, you know, knowing very well that we are very rich by the special grace of God, you will also give us a very good deal and then many other people will, will key in into this. Uh, that is my, uh, my comment, my request, but on behalf of myself and my colleagues in Blue Blood Vets here, and then even at the council level, I would like to thank the association president. I would like to thank the two presenters for today's program and uh, God bless, God continue to bless you all. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Chabala, for the comment and insight. Uh, as you said, you requested, you, you, I've already said it in the opening remark, we look at the possibilities of doing it at least twice a month or once. If we have enough presenters, we can even be doing it once weekly. Once we continue. This is the maiden edition and we will be getting in touch with senior colleagues and I like I think Dr. Dr. Thomas from the US we, we can send him a request to give us one or two to, to choose a topic and pick to our veterinarians over here. So I think it's something that we can all do. Since this is the situation we are in now. We can't meet physically to do most of our things. But we can make use of the technology. And from what we have today, it has been very, it has been a very insightful uh, forum. And I would like to also thank Dr. Dani for the wonderful presentation. And also to thank Blessing Mene, the CEO of VETSA, for his own wonderful presentation and for the, the softwares he highlighted that the veterinarians can, can benefit from. Also, uh, if there is any individual that needs any further information about what is was presented today, we can reach out to the secretariat and the information will be made available to him. On that note, I would like to call on Blessing Mene to round up meeting and let everybody have a wonderful day. Bless you. You have the floor. 
Mr. President, uh, Dr. Ghani Naro, uh, Dr. Bala Mohamed, uh, Dr. Godwin Abuni, Dr. Thomas Lawadi, and Dr. Taiwo, and every extraordinary vet from across Nigeria. It's a privilege to serve the veterinary community, and it's a privilege um, to have this community that's learning together. I want to thank every one of you. Um, mm -hmm. For those of you who are interested in um, deploying the veterinary application in your hospital, government or private, in your clinic or pharmacy, or you want to support um, farmers within your network, whether you're a feed company, pharmaceutical company, whatever, please click on the link you're saying, bit.ly slash vet technology. You click on that link, it will show you a very short form, and with that form, we will be able to reach back to you. We would also do our best um, to send the PowerPoint with the permission of Dr. Ghani and uh, Mr. President, uh, and this uh, video to, do, to everyone, you know, um, so that you can um, take a look at it one more time and, uh, and take things on for that. So thank you very much. I want to appreciate Dr. Bala Mohamed again, um, and Dr. Ghani again. Uh, you have been extraordinary fathers um, of this profession, mm -hmm. and um, I'm very grateful. Um, thank you very much to everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you. you very much. I think you can thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. So, bye bye, everyone. Thank you, bye. Okay.